My early childhood memories were that of an abusive stepfather. He used to punch us, he used to kick us, and he used to body slam us. He abused my mother and us children mentally, physically, and sexually. I remember what it was that got me through that abuse. It was a caring grandmother. Her care wasn't overbearing or obvious. It was something simple as placing me in her lap and rocking me in her rocking chair while she read me the Bible. That was the safest place in the world. What is your safe place? You know, prison can also be an abusive place, mentally, physically, and sexually. I helped to facilitate a program called GPS, Growth, Potential, and Self-Awareness. And during the program, we present uh, participants with activities that generate dialogue about real life situations and real life issues, such as that abuse. We also present fun activities to show a light and livelier side of life. And it was during one of those fun activities that one of the participants said, man, I haven't laughed in 20 years. Man, you know how good it felt just to laugh? Prison, life, the world can be a place where you just forget how to laugh. Why is that relevant to today? Because today we're talking about a life worth living. And see, for me, life hasn't always been worth living. And I tried to remember what it was that got me through whatever it was I was going through. And it's always been someone caring about my life being grandma's rocking chair. I remember the passionate, caring teacher who helped me get through high school and graduate. I remember the dedicated, caring JAG officer that helped me get an honorable discharge from the military. I remember the loving, caring woman who helped me get through loneliness. Well, to understand, and let's, let's just talk about what a lot of the people are talking about today and what could have made a difference in their lives and in the people's lives around them. And to me, it boils down to that one word, caring. To understand, you have to understand what caring is. I remember there was a guy leaving this place, and I told him, I said, listen, man, take care of yourself. And he looked at me, and he said, man, I can't do that. I'm not going to take problems, worries, and troubles home with me. And so at first I was a little confused because I thought I had told him to take uh, concern or be careful or look out for himself. Well, needless to say, I looked the word up, and there are two senses of the word care. Notice the first sense of the word, it it, 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 it's uh, translated as a noun, taking uh, distress, troubles, calling for you to name that care. And the second sense of the word is translates to a verb, <laughs> meaning that there should be some action behind your care. Watching out, guarding, overseeing, taking charge, being attentive. Sure enough, there was two senses of the word. And he knew I wasn't trying to tell him to take those things for real, but he just wanted me to be aware of the two senses of the word because his Christian faith dictated that we cast our cares on God who cares for us, 
who watches, who oversees, who takes charge of our lives and attentive. And then casting our cares upon God, our worries, our problems, our troubles. Well, I'd like to show you an interesting contrast between not caring and caring. I've been incarcerated now for about a little bit more than 23 years. And back in 1989, I started my incarceration here at the Marion Correctional Institution. And back then, this was a dark place. It's not the same place as it is today. Back then, it was dark and violent. Back then, men were extorted. Men were raped. Men were stabbed and even killed. And how you dealt with that is you pretended like you just didn't care. You learned how to not care because you could be next. Well, needless to say, in my 23 years of incarceration, I have been to other prisons. And let me tell you, the prison mentality was alive and well. But Marion Correctional Institution had more than prepared me to deal with prison life. For after all, it's just a matter of what? Not caring. Well, years later, I came back to the Marion Correctional Institution, and when I got here, it had changed drastically. I had discovered that the warden, Christine Money, who was responsible for this place, decided to care, not just about the place, but about people that was in the place. Her care became grandma's rocking chair in this place, creating change where you thought there could be no change. You know, the hardest lesson I learned about caring came from my daughter when she was about 13 or 14 years old. And I remember calling home and her mother telling me that my daughter had been raped. And no one can convince her to go to the hospital. And so as I talked to her on the telephone and I tried to convince her to go to the hospital, these are the words that she told me. She said, Daddy, all the time you've been in prison, you've never taken responsibility for being in that place. You blame the lawyers. You blame the prosecutor. You blame the judge. You blame the witnesses. But you never took no blame yourself. You spend all the money and all the time fighting to get out of that place. When she said, Daddy, I had a responsibility too because I made a choice. See, I trusted and cared about that young man. And even though he violated that trust and that care, I had to take responsibility for the position I put myself in. Wow. That coming from my, from my daughter. She says, Daddy, that's something you've never done. You've never taken responsibility for the position you put yourself in. You know, I have to take responsibility for the position I put myself in. And it took my daughter to make me see that. All these years, I've never been the care that she needed. See, remember that, that two-folded word care? There needs to be some action behind whatever it is. See, I never put action. All these years, people have cared about my life, but I've never taken the time to care about someone else. 
Well, caring is the catalyst that grows a community, nurturing it one person at a time, creating change where you thought there could be no change. Remember grandmother's rocking chair and that feeling? Whatever that might be for you. Well, at some point in time, you need to stop looking for grandma's rocking chair. And you need to be grandma's rocking chair and just care. Be the care somebody needs. <laughs>